and the the topic that a lot of people have become more open to which i am so glad that they are is going to be um this concept of decentralization um and secessionism i think a lot of people now are realizing that there is a fundamental problem here and i'm glad right like i always say better later than never in that you recognize that there is a fundamental issue with how this country is ran and the problems are that deep enough to where there is no repairing this there is no um trying to get the right people to fix it because the problems are entirely too deep for that there's a fundamental problem with how it was structured and it may, maybe it didn't come into fruition before, but it obviously now people are starting to see like, okay, guys, we, we, we have a problem here. Now, like I always say, the indoctrination camps known as public schools and academia, of course, they have people believing that and they conflate, unfortunately, secessionism and decentralization with the American Civil War. Um, I think that's being a bit, not a bit, a lot of uh, disingenuous, however. Um, but what that is, is control freaks because they are funded by that institution. When you consider the federal government and they benefit most from it, they're going to be the most protective of it because they're control freaks. Let's call them exactly what they are. They're control freaks. And this is why I, I say like, the discussion, there's no discussion to be had in trying to repair it. Y'all have attempted that for years. We've moved closer and closer to the absolute state um, um, socialism kind of orchestrated by way of the federal government. There's nothing else to discuss. It just simply doesn't work. And it's not, it's the power structure that's the problem. Therefore, the cancerous like tumor has to be removed, right? It has to be physically removed, if you will, so to speak. And a lot of folks will make the argument. It's actually not an argument. It's just a what, b bunch of what if scenarios, which I think those are worth discussing. And we will hear in a little bit. But they throw those out there because they possibly, or they can't possibly rather envision a world in which it's not the setup that we have right now. And they don't want to envision it to be fair. And of course it sounds very unrealistic until everybody starts to talk about it. And then it sounds a little more, realistic but the argument that they make is that that will lead to violence um, again they point to the civil war they think of this idea of the federal government sending goons um, to do, basically in mass i know it's one thing to pick one person off but you you have to consider that you're talking about in mass people would have to attack their family and i just don't think that that will happen to as high of a degree as you think now my argument is actually to the contrary in that if we don't peacefully divorce and peacefully separate, you're actually encouraging violent conflict because again, you're forcing people that hate each other, that are antithetical to each other culturally from a, from how they envision how the world should operate and you're forcing them to share a government. So what happens is a side gets power um, and they utilize said power to do very bad things to the opposition. And some of you guys are seeing this um, to the, you know, extended right now. Um, and in terms of like with the tech companies and how those have become like an extension of a lot of like leftist ideology and they, and they will work with each other in order to get people off of the, uh, off of these platforms. And again, you're talking about companies that get a lot of money, not just in, not necessarily in subsidies or grants or those, but more in like government contracts and government advertisement. And they're plumped up by your tax dollars. So, my argument is that if we keep going down this route, we are actually going to encourage, incentivize the conflict to happen, which is why I think talk should be ramping up about peacefully separating, period. Now, the one thing that people talk about is defense. That's the main thing that people will discuss because for whatever reason, though, that is not the case. They think that the government, like the main thing that they do is defend people, which is not, not even in their defense spending. Most of their defense spending is not being spent on defending this geographical area. It's been spent on like 
four and eight and 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 um, nation building and, and and those types of things anyway. But even if I did concede that, okay, y'all will give y'all that just for the time being. There can be, as there already is right now with between like the U.S. and other countries, defense agreements and mutual defense agreements that can exist. You don't need a massive federal government in order for that to be a thing. You don't. You simply don't. It is not necessary. And when you consider the fact that the government, the federal government right now, the vast majority of what they do, what they spend money on, has absolutely nothing to do with that anyway. It has nothing to do with that. And again, like I said, I, it, it's, it's hilarious because they talk about, well, this uh, power structure. and Oh, not a power structure. It's more like a vacuum. China, 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 China is what everybody talks about. As if Denmark only has 5.8. I will keep using that as an example because Denmark it gets to exist as a, as a country with 5.8 million people, and there's less people than that in my Metroplex. I just don't think people understand how big the United States of America actually is, geographically and from a population standpoint. But when you talk about the power that these guys have over at the federal government, so much power that they can just, uh, they criminalize things at the federal level, they, this is, I mean, I want to talk about den of uh, criminals. That's what the Capitol building is, is a workplace of the biggest criminal organization. They send your kids off the, uh, uh, off the wars, war efforts, and they spend all this vast amounts of your money and they sell off assets of unborn people. This is what the Federal Reserve allows them to do. This is not something, and you're seeing as it continues to get power, this is not something that can be real then. It needs to be eliminated. It needs to be completely eliminated. It cannot be, it cannot be repaired. There is something that is fundamentally wrong with that structure. And this is why I will continue to make the argument that it's to the opposite of what a lot of people fear in which, well, they're not going to just let people separate. My argument is that, no, you are actually encouraging conflict. If you see the direction that this country is going, you're encouraging conflict. Actually, you're going to encourage conflict in the event that you keep this up. Period. Now, the control freaks. They're certainly going to try to keep hold of that. This is why they will roll out everybody, all the educational academic elites. And this is why they got so frustrated when people kicked their feet up at their little cathedral. They don't like that. But if you're a Trump supporter, if you're not a Trump supporter, you know, cause I was having the same conversation with people two, two years ago doing like the, you know, the 2018 uh, kind of election cycle. If the power exists, as it does to the point to where you freak out when the wrong person gets control of the power, there's something wrong with the power. There's something wrong with the power. And this is why I would encourage you guys, no matter where you're at, when it comes to uh, whoever it is, definitely you guys that believe in the political process. I don't, <laughs> but your leaders, commentators, um, all of those, to me, the direction and the conversation should not be about Section 230 and and all of these sorts of band-aids that these guys are trying to to slap on these issues, right? And and acting as if that's going to do anything. The Republican Party has tried to play this rigged game and they have been complicit in growing this government and moving towards absolute socialism, or you can pick whatever one that you want, or they have been useless in stopping it. What are we doing, people? The fact that y'all fools still think that there is something to gain by trying to keep this, your, your beloved republic together? No. There's a problem there, and it needs to be broken up. And then you would see that a lot of these issues would start to resolve itself. And it's not just with with um, what you, the conversation that we're having about social media or tech companies. No, no, no. I'm talking about just in general. The federal government is this mammoth, 
mass of mammoth, and it doesn't need to be shrunk. It needs to be eliminated. It needs to be eliminated. The wrong people get in office. They do things that you guys don't. And you're seeing your enemy has has every desire to try to utilize that power to shut you up, silence you and shut you up and punish you. That's what they want to use the power to do. Why y'all are trying to hold on to that? I don't know. I just will blame it on the indoctrination. Decentralization is going to be to me the route that gives us the least amount of bloodshed. You encourage bloodshed by forcing people to have to share a government that hate each other. And I don't think the greatest divide really is to me. I don't think it's between Trump supporters and non-Trump supporters. That ain't nothing. I think the greater divide is between people who are, want to be left alone and the control freaks. That's the bigger divide. That's the bigger block of people. And then those people support whatever individuals or politicians or government officials that they think will get them closer to that point. But to me, that's the bigger divide. It's the control freaks versus the people that just want to be left the hell alone. So I think the conversation and you've seen me lead with this. I've had more people open to this idea than I've ever had. When I talk about eyes that have been on me and I get it. You look at what happened with the election. Some of y'all still believed in the quack elections and the and, uh, uh, the election process. And you feel as if this year or this past year, this past election, where it was very unique election with this whole mail-in voting and all of that, and they didn't even give you an audit. They didn't even give you a full audit. They didn't. You got like maybe a, a, a half-tail audit, which um, happened in Georgia. With with a, with a with a few thousand votes, you know, but for the most part, all of what y'all question, and you couldn't, they didn't even give you that. They just said, "Shut up." Doesn't matter what evidence you have. Shut up. The election process is not rigged, um, and uh, yeah, why y'all want to continue to play the game? And this is what I'm trying to get Republicans uh, or people that rather support Republicans to understand. You're seeing how rigged the game is. When you look at people at the federal level, for example, the, the the Congress folk who have been incentivizing or inciting, I will use that term, the turmoil that's happened, all of that post George Floyd. In a minute, someone kicked their feet up at the at the cathedral, uh, which was far less. It was far less bad than what they had been doing. They've destroyed more property. They've killed more people with the post George Floyd protests. Um, they've killed more people, more property, and they were damaging your beloved cathedrals as well. So all of what you said happened to a higher degree and they got absolutely no punishment for it. None, but they have no problem utilizing their power and the platform that they're given by way of their government position to try to punish you for kicking your feet up at the cathedral. And it's not just the people that was kicking their feet up at the cathedral. It's everybody that they can try to pin on those that they're trying to remove, um, and punish. Why would you? And so you see that the game is rigged right there, that it's it's not an, it's not balanced. Right. The courts are, are corrupt. None of that is balanced. This is why I'm sitting here like, why do y'all want to keep this institution together? We don't need this centrism bull crap either. We don't need a, a little bit of that side and a little bit of that side. No. Is a fundamental problem here with folks that simply are control freaks and want to utilize their power to do the things it is that they want to personally do. Not you placing your dollar. They can't even dog. Y'all can't even decide where y'all money go for y'all kids education. <laughs> like y'all can't even decide that. They don't even you don't get the You don't even get that decision for you. Right. In terms of the funding, right? There's something wrong here. It needs to be completely removed. The game's rigged. I mean, not even just with the protests about like uh, the violence and all of that, that objectively speaking, it's not up for debate or dispute. Objectively speaking, there was more violence and more property damage um, that resulted in more deaths and it was more costly with, and because it was more widespread, then a couple of people at a couple of grandmas and dude bros, a couple of hours at the Capitol, right? 
That's not up for debate. It's not up for dispute. But when you look at those protests and you look at what happened in that year with the whole COVID thing, they locked you down. They locked down your businesses. They did all of that. They lectured you about lectured you about social distancing. And uh, what happened is was that they allowed those protesters to do everything. And even while that was going on, they were still blaming the other side. They said that your 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 beloved your beloved Trump and his um, rallies. They were the super spreading rallies. They didn't even care. Actually, they used the experts, uh, the corrupt experts, to actually try to conjure up this narrative that somehow they were slowing the spread, the the actual protesters. Like, that's the game that you're playing. And meanwhile, you got a bunch of crackhead Republicans sitting here trying to fight straight up with a bunch of guys that, again, the analogy I use is you're trying to fight someone straight up, honestly, that has loaded gloves and they bought off the refs and the judges. And y'all still want to sit here and play this game. You know the game's rigged, and you want to sit here and play the game. Need a divorce. Simple as that. Need a divorce. And just because that divorce is there doesn't mean that we don't have, like, momentous forms of decentralization. But I feel like that's where we start. And it doesn't have to come by way of, Texas seceding from the union, California, Florida, someone seat seceding from the union. How about just complete dissolute this like just complete breaking down of the entire federal government? How about that? And then effectively the 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 states become nation state. They become countries, if you will. That is far more preferable than what it is that we have right now, which is a big, bloated, massive criminal organization ruling over 330 something million people around that 320 to 330 million people and they're not playing the game fairly which why you would expect that that's an entirely different conversation but you are seeing that the game is rigged so why continue to play it you see that the power is a problem. Why continue to allow them to have the power? The answer to Nancy Pelosi um, and her and her issues, then it's not replacing her. It's not recalling or anything out. It's how about we remove the rug from under them and then all of those crackheads are left without a job and they're forced to get real jobs instead of arguing in Washington about how to spend money um, that isn't theirs and funding nation building efforts. How about we just force them to get a real job by, I don't know, that position not existing. That is me. That to me is more preferable. And I will continue to say that I just do not believe I think you underestimate the fact that it's it's one thing for like a one off situation, right? Where, yeah, they'll jail individuals, they'll jail even a slight small group of individuals. But you're going to have a hard time sitting here and attacking an entire country. Definitely whether you get these these people who live in these countries or live in these, excuse me, these states, which would effectively be countries, but live in these states, have family in these states. It's easier for them to bomb the Middle East than it is to go bomb Texas or bomb California, go bomb Florida. Your beloved Constitution did not stop any of this, okay? Like the great Lysander Spooner. Called out. You got you the government that you have right now, or was it? It, it was useless in stopping it. You all uh, sit up here and yell about First Amendment or, or Second Amendment. Do y'all not understand how many federal gun laws there are on the books? They long crapped on your beloved Second Amendment. They long crapped on that. That's gone. That's not even a thing. All if all if all gun gun laws are infringements. Why are we even talking about this? Right? You're belo- I get it. I understand that it was a thing that y'all could cling to for a bit of hope. For the republic that you're trying to save. The game was rigged from the start. The truth is. And then they stopped nothing. And they still continue to infringe upon your God-given rights. Your individual property rights. They continue to infringe upon it. Why do you think that getting the right people in office is going to do anything? What have your beloved Republicans done? They've done nothing. They've done nothing. Well, maybe they've been complicit. I mean, when you want to talk about it, Reagan included, or when it comes to the gun laws, they've been complicit in all of that. 
even your even your beloved Trump, right? Dan Crenshaw, who who some crackhead was the other day was talking about, he needs to be the future of the Republican Party, and he's sitting here talking about red flag laws. <laughs> Let's just remove the rug from under them and just get rid of that institution and force all of the House, all of the Senate, all of them to get real jobs. We need a divorce. And I think that's going to be our most peaceful solution. Doesn't mean it'll be absolutely peaceful. Doesn't mean that it won't be without some sort of conflict. But I think it's the route that will have the least amount of conflict. Because if we keep going down this route, I think y'all are the ones that are stepping towards like more of, of a of violent behavior because this is not a sustainable thing. This is not a sustainable thing. They spitting in your face. Oh, they're pissing on you and calling it rain. Let's say that. And they don't care. They just simply don't care. So how about we just uh, eliminate the entire federal government? And if you guys want a mutual defense agreement, Whatever you have a mutual defense agreement agreement among the 50 states, much like you already have among the other countries right now, which America and other countries are basically obligated to um, protect other. You know, I talked to funny. I talked about some of the Scandinavian countries within these defense agreements. You can have a cordial defense agreement doesn't mean we have to share a government. Just get rid of the federal government. I think that's the uh, that's the starting. And it only sounds unrealistic because that's not a solution that your leaders are actually putting forth. Once people start talking about it, it becomes more realistic because the whole Brexit thing. I remember for a very long, they called Nigel, they call all those guys quacks. Like there was no way that that would ever even be a thing that's considered. And it even took them a while, it took them up to fucking two weeks ago to, to really get the thing uh, 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 officialized, if you will, but it happened at mon- minimum. It, 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 you know, it, it the, the the European Union does not rule over in the same capacity as they did before. So it sounds unrealistic until everybody starts to consider it as an actual solution. So yeah, it's, it's it sounds unrealistic when you don't talk about it. But if you want to keep playing this game and continue to hold an L, that's the answer. But the answer is not trying to repurpose what's happening right now term limits that everybody keeps screaming about what the fuck good is that going to do if the institution itself is corrupt what good is it going to do swapping another motherfucker in there nothing and nothing it doesn't do it doesn't do anything for the problem (laughs) it is a fundamental one that is built in and is deep it has to be eliminated it has to be eliminated. So let's talk about it. Let's have an honest discussion about how it can happen. Open one dialogue. Then it'll start sounding a lot more realistic, but control freaks. They don't want that. So I will tell you this is going to be less coming from like their military state agents and more coming from the entertainment elites, the educational elites and the economic elites who all benefit from it existing. Those are going to be the guys that they send out there to fear monger. But those are just words. Let them talk hot air. Pull the rug from under them. You have no control over this entire geographical area. Force them to get real jobs. Let's talk about it realistically.